<clears throat> I'll tell you what, I definitely needed a nap. You know, uh, I apologize. There's a ton of emails I have not even responded to yet. Probably one of the busiest weeks I can remember in recent history is tonight. Now, we're staying at the hotel, but I slept out here to make a video because I need to make one. I made one this morning. I didn't get a chance to post it yet. I'll post it and this video at the same time. So you guys may or may not have known, uh, those of you paying attention did. We woke up at 7 o'clock this morning. Now, we didn't have a way to get Father done to Northfield Park. Borrowed a vehicle, borrowed a truck and trailer from Jason Petrie, Hold the Line Stables, and uh, literally, Amy and Amy and the kids wanted to come because they wanted to go see the baby goats, and I had horses to school. We had, most importantly, was Brace for Landing and Enzo Well were schooling today, and Amy was going to school Enzo, because it's the schoolers in Ohio are not like Ontario, where you might have four schoolers and full of horses in Ontario, there was like five horses behind the gate total at Northfield today, and some days there's not even that. So I couldn't plan to go in two schoolers because there wasn't two schoolers. So Amy, Jason's not here, and Amy said, oh, I'll go with him. And Amy rarely gets to get up in behind the gate with the race bike, and she was a, a, certainly a professional at it today. Um, did her work perfectly, schooled Enzo perfectly, and a very telling day for Enzo also. Now, my day with Enzo only, with Brace for Landing and Enzo and Father Dunn, it only started uh, a cascade of a number of things that we have to talk about. The staking, now that we got a pretty good eye on the Colts and we're so blessed with so many good horses in Pennsylvania, the staking schedule, where they're gonna go. I said to you yesterday that I talked to Scott about taking the Colts after Philadelphia. It just dawned on me that they go from Philadelphia and the next one is at the is Arden, is at the Meadows. So those horses will come back here and then go to Scott for, um, and then go to Scott for the Poconos, Philly. Uh, I think it, I have to double check now. I've looked at so many things, my, my head's spinning. Uh, so I think it goes Meadows, the Arden Stakes. Then I believe it goes Poconos, Philly, Philly, Poconos, one or the other. The Meadows would likely be the fourth one again. And then the final would be in Philadelphia. I believe that's how it goes. I know the final is in Philadelphia. So um, how we traverse that it's not as cut and dry as I thought it was on yes, uh, when I, as I thought it was yesterday. Some of these Colts looked very good, but we can't put them all in the sire stakes. We're all just going to be tripping over one another. Fant maybe, maybe the very best problem we've ever had is that we have so many talented horses. You guys saw the races yesterday. Now there's going to be more horses. People will skip the the Meadows one because. The Meadows is quite a ways away from the East Coast, quite a ways away from Philadelphia and the Poconos, so a lot of people don't come here. I know Aki didn't bring his good colt here. So where do we race? Who do we race where? When we go to the Poconos, or when we go to Philadelphia in seven days, we will have seven colts in Philadelphia. I'll be there. Scotty will be there. For sure, there won't be seven divisions combined. There just won't. So again, you're looking at four and three at very best. That would be perfect. But who are the three going into the Sire Stakes? Truthfully speaking, I would like to race Carter Michael Dio in the Stallion Series. I'm very confident that he'll trot. I, I know what I saw yesterday. I should be able to fix that. It should not happen again. But do we race him in the Sire Stakes? We just drop him down a level. Keep in mind, I have, in my mind... There are some horses that we have real big fish to fry, and he's one of the biggest ones. He's one of the Colts that could be anything. So could Spitfire. So could Crantini. I'll talk about Horn Player today. Not the performance I wanted, but not a bad performance. So let's just start from the top. This is a long list. Uh, yeah, it's got to be 30 horses to talk about quick. But I think seeing the emails come in, hearing people talk to me and ask me questions, I think it's important that some of these things are addressed here because I can't possibly, I just don't have five seconds right now. I literally could have written the emails, but for those of you that write me emails in the afternoon and you get those short responses back, that's because I'm crunched for time and I'm trying to jam a million things into, into my schedule. That's where I like flying. I can sit in the waiting area for an hour. I can get on the plane, write emails on the plane. They'll get sent when I land and so on and so forth. But it's all driving this week, right? Scioto, the Meadows, Northfield, the Meadows. So I want to talk to everybody. Adrenaline Rush, qualified now. We're going to put them in 
the condition claimer. You know, he's going to be the most expensive condition claimer we've ever had so far. Uh, just from the bionic work he's had done. It's like the million dollar horse. So Austral Hanover, uh, or, uh, sorry, Adrenaline Rush is going to race next week. Um, I'll talk to Debbie via text tonight, but, um, you know, we'll probably race him in a condition claimer over there. 15 claimer for non-winners, a blob, whatever. Um, so we'll get him out. I think Georgian, probably a good place to start. So we'll see. We're going to race him where he can win. I can guarantee you that. That's one thing's for sure. Austral Hanover, uh, a bit of an enigma. Not only did he fool me, not only did he fool everybody. There's some people that say, oh, I knew he was good. You know, you might have hoped he was good. There was no one on planet Earth knew he was good because he wasn't good. That's why. So he's uh, awesome now. So that's all that matters right now is that Austral Hanover is awesome now. Here's a horse. If I do what I say I was going to do and drop Carter Michael Dio down into the Buckeye and down into the Stallion Series for a week, He'd be front of the line, him and Tailgate Buzz, to one of the ones to jump up. Now, we do have Crantini. We do have Spitfire. We'll be going back 100% into the Sire Stakes. So there could be a spot open there. No guarantees, no promises, but there could, could be a spot open there. Um, Blue Bayou Dio, $100,000 final. I had to pick between Blue Bayou Dio and driving one emission in the Sire Stakes, which sounds like an easy deal, but John McDonald just set the track record with Blue Bayou Dio. Now, of course, you'd have to draw seven. Heaven forbid we draw two, three. I guess I sound like a crybaby. We had one of the best months ever in the history of my life this month, so let's not complain too much. But poor Blue, you know, she's been such a good filly for us. I would love to see her draw inside. But her summer's long from over. She's going to head down to the Red Mile bounce around there and I believe there's probably something for her in Corbin at the end of the summer so there's lots of racing for Blue Bayou Dio still um, but all the luck in the world don't kid yourself if she's in striking position and hasn't been used really hard now obviously Johnny can't map out the same trip he got the other day in the final but uh, she is coming in razor sharp also so uh, good luck to Jason and Johnny I'll be watching uh, both Ontario and Kentucky and driving what a mission and uh procrastinators in also and I know procrastinator has been a little you know we haven't been able to do a whole lot with him but there's still a good horse there and he's still learning I think there's lots of classes for him and, and, and although out of the seven hole and a half mile tracks a tough spot for him I'm eager to race him on uh, Monday evening um, blue Tesla a lot of people say where this horse come from what's going on with blue Tesla we purchased blue Tesla last week everybody knows that um, I thought she raced fantastic last night. Sky's the limit. We can do whatever we want with Blue Tesla. The world is literally our oyster with her. Um, I don't know how much money she's made. I, I think she's got... Uh, I'll have to double check. But again, uh, just a, a very fortunate purchase. You never know what you're going to get, right? It's almost like the show where they, they open up, they buy the lockers and they go in and look. You never know. We bought Blue Tesla. It could be a good Blue Tesla. It could be a mediocre bad blue tesla now um very happy there was some good good fillies in there last night that was an impressive victory for her i can't wait to see what we're going to do with her next uh bomb hugger um four horse field five four four five four horse field i think uh at uh at saratoga now mark scotty uh both of the little judases jumped off bomb hugger Mark uh, left to go drive somewhere else, and Scotty jumped on George to Sherm's horse. You have to understand, uh, Scott Sarah and I are friends, and him and Megan have a horse for us, but Scotty's a politician also. I may have been a politician, but he has to be every day, and he wants to keep big accounts and people happy like George to Sherm. I understand that. I don't. I think Baumhugger's a better filly than that filly, but I think it was an easier decision for him than, than, um, than he let on. I can tell you that. So I, I'm not I'm not upset with uh, with him driving the other filly. I think we got James DeVoe. DeVro, De, DeVoe. I don't know the gentleman, but I looked up his stats. He does really good. And if Mark Beckwith says he's good, he's good. I feel bad because I did sleep in a little bit. And the changes were due. We could have had his son, Brett, drive the horse. I'm sure he would have got along just fine with him. Um, and by the time Mark had called, you know, that's a tough decision, right? Really tough. Here's this kid driving. He's got a four-horse field with a stake race. And I dropped the ball. I, I just didn't get up in time. And when I finally got the message and realized that they didn't list Brett, I said, I said, yeah, Brett can drive the filly. Oh, it's too late. I said, well, you know, surely they haven't gone to print. He goes, no, nah, they, won't, they won't do it. So um, I feel bad. So for Brett, I apologize. That's on me. And for Merrick, you know, tough position to be in. Um, 
very tough position to be in and good luck with the filly. Um, I know a lot of people have been asking me about Baumhugger and what we're going to do with her. And I can tell you, you know, I think this is a time of year when we start talking about things that are probably going to happen. Baumhugger can't beat Melander's filly. She's, what, fifth best filly in the division, maybe. Um, we don't want to race against the, the, the freak from uh, Melander's. So I suspect uh, do as good as we can at Saratoga. We're not going to be worse than fourth. Do as good as we can at Saratoga. Race her at Monticello, and then probably I'll pitch it to the group. But probably going to look for maybe looking at the open market for this filly after that. Here's a filly. If she does good in Saratoga and does good at Monticello, almost guaranteed a berth in the final. Finals at Tioga. Not good for us. I would like the final to be at Saratoga. Or as Mark said, around an apple tree. <laughs> that, would be, that would be great. But when we look at Baumhugger, here's a filly that, yes, we are keeping some mares. But when you look at a filly like her, she's worth too much money right, for us to be hanging on to to breed, and I'm not going to race her as a four-year-old, I think her market is get to 200000 she's already a multiple stake-winning filly with a very, very good lifetime mark, there's some brand name recognition there, not to mention she has a powerhouse pedigree, very, very strong pedigree, I think this filly would work, one, if you're a, anybody that breeds and races, which there's lots of them out there, this is a filly that is going to be eligible, hopefully, to the final and uh, Tioga, she's eligible to the Breeders' Crown, a number of things. We can go on and on and on. At the end of the day, uh, to maximize our value in Baumhugger, she likely will hit the open market after Monticello. I would suspect now that'll be up to our clients to do that. I have a very small, uh, very small share in uh, in Baumhugger. And I'm, I'm Switzerland on this one, but I suspect, uh, again, looking at the entire situation, stepping back and looking at the big picture, um, I think that's the smartest play with Baumhugger. We'll see. There's a lot of a lot of grass and dirt between now and then. Um, now, Brace for Landing, I went with Tate. Very happy. I went a mile off the gate with him. 58-3, and three, last half of 58 seconds over Northfield Park. That sounds great, but he wasn't perfect. He didn't feel like he really wanted to dig through the track. Like when you, when we drove, when I drive Spitfire or, or Scotty with Crantini, the horses that are screwed in tight, ready to go, and, and, and not understanding their job, they give you this gritty feel like they want to fight anyone at any time. I just didn't get that from Brace, and that's not because he's not good. Remember, it, th there's a number of horses on here I'm going to talk about, like uh, Cutie Cumber and uh, Sir Strong, and a lot of these other horses that just aren't mature yet. They're not physically mature. Brace for landing, I think, mentally a little bit. Uh, he might be like 85% understanding everything, but physically also, we've said this from day one. When we bought him, when we trained him down, all the way through the spring, at the open house, into the schoolers, now the qualifiers, even on race night. I think I know what happened on the race nights where he made a break. I think we've mitigated that. He was fine coming off the gate today. Did his work very, very well. In fact, I was able to take him back and drop him in the five hole, quarter pole him to the front and go my mile with him. I don't have any problems qualifying him next week. I am going to switch his shoes around a hair more. I like the flip flops up front, but we're going to go to an aluminum behind. And I got to be very, very careful with these aluminums behind. They're going to jar him a little bit. They might bite him a little bit. I want to keep a very close eye on how he's how he's behaving in these shoes. He'll tell us very, very quickly if he likes them or not. But uh, I think that will take those last little wrinkles at top speed. Um, it did for Spitfire Overseas, for sure. He wears aluminums behind, and I'm always keeping an eye on how he's wearing them. Some, what you'll see is that they'll wear the outside of that shoe right off, and that's because those horses are, are it's jarring them a little bit, and they won't stay sound like that. They won't with those aluminums on, so if they start wearing them like that, get them off and put full swedges on them right away. Um, so that's where we're at right now with Brace. Happy with them, excited about next week's qualifier, but also want to make sure that we're on the right we're on the right path with this guy, but it, it appears we are. Just everybody, whether it comes to this horse or a number of our other horses, especially the ones that we, we feel are talented, you are going to have to have patience because I am not racing them until they're ready to race. So I don't want anybody saying, well, you qualified in 58, surely he's ready to race. They will not go behind the gate paramutually until I am certain they are ready to go. And that's that. It has to be that way with these horses. So you're going to have to trust me on this. Race for landing. Speed-wise, sure, I can qualify him now. But he may qualify next Thursday. He will. He's not racing until I know he's 100%. Just so we're clear. Uh, Brave World, you guys saw it. He's going to have good weeks and bad weeks. Source like a billion years old. Leave him alone. Everybody after he race bad says he's in too tough. Or we need to change a trainer. We need to change a venue. We are changing nothing with Brave World. Not a thing. 
The horse is going to have his good days and his bad days. I, he's not going to Michigan. He's not going to Illinois. He's not going to anywhere. He's going to stay right there. It, the next thing, the next change we make will probably be him up for sale at some point. But I'm not going to move him somewhere because it's the same thing. You're going to have him fluctuate up and down this class ladder. He's not good enough to do a straight 30 wherever they happen to write one. So just let this play out for now. Let the horse race in the preferred three. Get some money now and again in the preferred two. Yes, he had a crappy race the other night. He'll bounce back, much like Century Invictus. Both in the same barn. Both scoped the same. Both have similar bloods. Didn't have a great week. That's okay. They're much like us. They're going to have bad weeks and good weeks. I think I think it's very important, too, when we're having such a great week over here. I'll tell you one thing. I do not... I'll tell you what I don't like is... is People concerned that I'm over here too much and I'm not in Ontario and I'm not paying attention to Ontario. You know, at the end of the day, that kind of hurts my feelings a little bit, right? I can tell you every piece of equipment on every horse that we have in our care, anywhere on planet Earth, maybe not Australia, but everywhere. I pay attention to every single horse. I talk to every single trainer and I know exactly where they're going and what they're doing. But still, if you look at where we're at and what we're doing, the place I need to be it's right where I am right now. That's where I need to be, 100%. Between James McDonald and all of our training staff, Mario, Daniel O'Brien's still there working with us. Um, Harry is there. Dominic is there. These are people that put their blood, sweat, and tears into the horses. I'm not needed there as a driver, and I'm not needed there to oversee because I don't really see a whole lot going on. If Cash Deals doesn't race good because she's sick, she's sick. And of course... I should have told everybody she's not going into the second grassroots because she was sick. That was my fault, right? But it's not the end of the world. It's not that cash deals didn't do something right because I wasn't there. That's not true. And it, you guys have to understand that when it comes to the summer, I am like, I, I, I was as tired this afternoon as I've been in a while. You know, yesterday it was hot. We raced all those horses. Keep in mind, when I go behind the gate with those horses, right, at some point, when they pick up speed, everything melts away and it's just another race. That's what it is. But when I go on the track and I warm them up and I post parade them, I'm trying to figure out how I want to drive them. Is their equipment right? The adrenaline dump, the adrenaline jump and then dump in and out of every single race. For us especially, because I have the stable.ca on my shoulders, it's a lot. And yesterday I was very, very tired. I had a nice dinner. I got to relax and I woke up tired today. But Father Dunn had to get to Northfield Park. So we threw Father Dunn in the truck, went and qualified him. Then Amy and I schooled the other two. We It's a two-hour drive from Northfield Park to the Meadows. We left Northfield Park at 2 o'clock, or at 12 o'clock, and I had to warm up horn player last trip at 10 after 2. So there's the narrow timeline that I had this afternoon. So I, I, I need everybody to understand that when I say... The things that I say, I treat your money like it's mine, and I, I go where I have to be, that's the truth. And I am not needed in Ontario right now. And if I was needed, I'd be there. One of the horses that, that I'm concerned about right now in Ontario, nothing but a dreamer. Schooled fantastic on Tuesday. Those were James's words, not mine. James said the horse was, I used to say Anthony, I went with him a week or so ago. He was good, but you know I didn't go with him in the gold. and I, I, I like him, but I didn't know if he's a gold colt. I wish we had another crack at the gold before the grassroots. He said, the grassroots is the best thing for him because he'll be good, but I do believe. He said, this is a nice horse. He said, totally different horse today because that's Harry, right? Harry's been around forever and he understands. Things aren't working well. Go back to the drawing board. Okay, he's a trotter. He's a young trotter. Let's check his knees and his feet. Let's work on his problems that we know that he has. This is what a professional does. Same with Mario. You know, do you know how hard it was for Mario Bergeron not to put himself down at Renegade Gypsy when he listed James McDonald? This is a guy with over 8,000 lifetime wins and $100 million in purse money now has relegated himself to the second line, much like I do. Only difference is he's been doing it a lot longer than me. But to have the understanding of the situation to say, listen, maybe we need, maybe I need a fresh set of hands on this horse just to see how he is. And knowing the entire situation, it takes a lot, a lot of dedication. And, and you know, I didn't tell him to. I never said a word about Mario not driving Renegade Gypsy. He did that all on his own. And I appreciate it. 
I respected him for it. So please understand when you when 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 we're talking about. Um, where I need to be and not be. It really does hurt my feelings when people say, oh, it seems like you're not paying attention, Ontario. I know you don't mean it like that. Surely you don't mean it like that. But it does. Trust me when I tell you, I am everywhere I can be all the time in the summer. All the time. So moving on, Carter Michael Dios. I told everybody uh, the plan with him in, in my head is Stallion Series next. That's not because he's not good enough. The horse run for 16th of a mile and trotted in 58. He was going to be second to Crantini in 56, closing in on him. Scotty was under wraps, but I was going to close in on him and be second easily. I know exactly what took place yesterday. I didn't see it at Northfield. One, it was a different surface. Two, two very different speeds. And three, different track size. I What I saw yesterday is exactly uh, what I needed to see from Carter Michael Dio. Unfortunately, it cost us money. I had no other way to see that. Need a little more grab up front. He may need weight, but I'm not going to rush to the weight because I don't want to get him jammed up. Hobbles need to come in a hole. Line pole needs to go back on the outside. I know exactly what Carter Michael Dio needs, and he's going to get it as he heads into Philadelphia. I believe putting him in the Stallion Series and letting him get his confidence up will only make him stronger and on his feet more. Rather than looking to maybe make an error because he's a little self-conscious with that win, hopefully win. There's no cakewalk there either. But hopefully with a win under his belt in that manner will sharpen him right up. Uh, as I talked about Cash Deal, she'll race next week. Mario said it hit her real hard. She was sick for a week. Had to miss the second sta second grassroots. And she'll go, uh, she'll be in the third one for sure. I don't know if there's a race in between. Mario and I talked about that last night. I have to go back and look at my notes. Um, Century Invictus, as I said, to be fair, he's not a grassroots horse. He's not a big track horse. He he is a grassroots track, a grassroots horse and a half and a five-eighths. But even for, for him, that wasn't him the other night. Like that horse... He was exhausted the last 16th of a mile. Last 100 yards, he was on fumes. And I, I don't, I've never seen him race like that before. So, uh, scoped a little sick. Blood, a little off. Uh, no free lunch. Brave World. Century Invictus. Harry might have had a little something go through his barn. But he should be over it good. Harry's always on top of that stuff. He always makes sure they're 100% before he brings them back. And that makes sure that it's few and far between those types of lines. Uh, Crantini was incredible. Um, looking at his staking, we did take him out of the Houghton. And, and I was surprised. Scotty said he wouldn't want to race him in the Houghton anyway. He said the Houghton's really hard on them. They go really fast. It's always a hot day on Hambo Day. Uh, they go really, really fast. And it's tough to recover from that for these horses. And he might be right. So he said, I don't care about the Houghton. I don't, I, you know, he's your horse. We could have raced him in it. But I'd rather focus on uh, later on. Like, still have him in the Breeders Crown. He is in the Champlain. And if we happen to luck out, he is not in the Wellwood. You guys go back and look at the videos you can see why we paid a lot of horses into the wellwood but at that time when we were to make those last two payments crantini was a complete lunatic and um although we liked him and thought he was good there wasn't really enough information for me to continue to spend thousands and thousands of dollars so we didn't put him in the wellwood but last i checked we do have a spot for the mohawk millions and our best colt will be in the mohawk millions and as i said to scott if that's crantini then that's Grantini. And there's certainly no problem there. He's undefeated. Everybody's talking about him. Um, so I'm not very concerned at all. I had a number of people ask, what's wrong with Cunning Connie now? For two reasons. One, because people are dumping their shares. Two, because, you know, she walked the other night. I know exactly about him. Cunning Connie has a ceiling. She's an okay filly. She raced okay, but James Gaster 28 and 3, and that took a lot of the kick on the end of it out of that mare, right? There's nothing wrong with Cunning Connie. That's just who she is. And for the people out there that think, oh, there's something definitely wrong with her, yeah, she had a little bit of mucus, same as a lot of horses this time of year. If we'd have scoped them all in that race, you might have seen them all a little bit of mucus. But the idea that somehow there's something definitely wrong with Cunning Connie, there is nothing wrong with Cunning Connie. She's a nice filly. We get her to Georgian, Grand River, get her on those small tracks and the grass roots. They're going to have a tough time beating her. But put her on that long stretch, get out of there 28 and a piece. It's not hard to figure out. Nothing about that race shocked me. Nothing. So for those of you out there that, one, think that she was horrible, I think it might be an expectations thing more than anything else. And for those of you out there that are genuinely concerned, is there something wrong with her? No, there is not. Uh, Cutie Cumber, another filly that we're just taking our time with. There's no rush with Cutie Cumber. Um, much like uh, Brace for Landing, she will race. She's schooling tomorrow. But you will not see her qualify again or race until she's 100%. 
that's that's the way it is, the way it has to be. There's no rushing to the racetrack for this filly. She was one of our best fillies training down. That power and speed didn't disappear. She's going through a growth spurt. It's hot out right now. Let me see how she does tomorrow. I'd like to see a mile and two two tomorrow. Now that's James, probably going two five, but we'll uh, she'll come back again. Uh, She'll come back again in a week, and we'll get a good handle on her. There are a couple of horses in that same holding pattern. And just so you know, if you go back and watch the videos from Three Point Blue Chip last year, these videos that I did in the summer, I talked about him the exact same way. He will race when he is ready. And when he is ready, he'll be good. And he was. That's where we're at with uh, landing pad. I didn't even mind scratching him the other night. Landing pad, um, cutie cumber brace for landing. What I meant by I didn't mind scratching was he wasn't 100%, and I'm not 100% sure he's ready to go in 58 right now. So when James decided that he wanted to, you know, he said, yeah, go ahead, put him in. I was a little hesitant. So when they said, when I looked at his blood and saw that the differential was flipped, it was an easy decision. He is not, not racing. He'll school Tuesday also, landing pad well. So uh, back to Cutie Cumber. She will school tomorrow, and then James and I will speak about how she went what she looked like, how she felt. And when I start to hear words like strong, and that's the horse that I remember her being, that's when Cutie Cumber will race. Fashion Presidente didn't really need him on the list. The horse and him and Austral Hanover have just been such a breath of fresh air since day one. No, no. <laughs> that's a lie. Not since day one. Since day one of staking season, since day one of, of racing season, I mean. And yeah, present surprise. Um, we knew Fashion Presidente was okay. He's not as good as Austral, but both those Colts have been tremendous. Tremendous. I loved the way Fashion Presidente raced. He allowed me, the thing I love the most about both those Colts is for horses that seemingly didn't listen to anything they were taught and didn't learn anything, they learned a hell of a lot. Because when I crossed over to the front with like a thoroughbred out of the gate with Fashion Presidente, I immediately just easy and his ears just went tink. And he just let me sink right into him. You gotta watch him in the turns. He runs in real bad, Fashion Presidente, but he knows it too. He'll allow you to set him up for the turns, and then he sprinted away down the lane. If we can do that again, they won't beat him. And he'll get he'll get better and faster. But if we can race him in that manner, I think we're laughing with Fashion Fashion Presidente. He was great. Just an absolute treat to drive. Him and Austral Hanover will be heading now. This guy for sure will be in the Stallion Series. There's nothing wrong with that. Very proud of what this horse has become. I think it's very important too. You know, Danny spent a lot of time going with Fashion Presidente and Austral Hanover and both looked horrible for the longest time. And still, the work we put in, the drills we put into them, they seemingly learned. Somehow when it looked like they weren't learning and paying attention, they were because both those Colts turned out to be very, very nice Colts. Uh, Father Dunn. Now, this was my first look at Father Dunn today up close, uh, running in real hard in the turns, not really a half-mile track horse, and was hitting the bike. Um, in fairness, he made two breaks. I thought they missed both of them. They definitely missed one. He made a tiny skip for, like, a stride where they show him as a break coming out of the gate. It wasn't out of the gate. It was going into the... Or, coming out of the first turn. He was really hot, rolled off stride for a second. Going to change his front shoes uh, a little bit. And then I'm going to bring him over to the Meadows and qualify him here next Tuesday. The thing about him, he's like a 12-15 claimer. He, you know, we bought Blue Tesla. Who knows what they're going to be? You never know. This guy, yeah, I think there's some upside. I think we can work with him. But I think overall he's going to be like a 12 or 15 claimer. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, obviously that's what we bought him for. But I'm okay with him. He'll be fine. Um, Globe Trotting Racing Monday night. That's the last time. I, I, I talked to Mark Beckwith a little bit today. That's the last time they race our two horses together. Look at that cat. Should never race against Globe Trotting in this class. And the problem is they can't fill claimers in Ontario. So we're going to have to find somewhere to race him consistently. He may have to come somewhere also because this this entire uh, facade about, hey, oh, we have a class form. We'll put him in here. Oh, wait, he's in with horses he'll never beat. That's just so unfair to this horse. And I, I, felt, um, I felt a little angry. Uh, when I saw the draw for look at that cat and I'm going to sit down tonight and find out exactly where he's going to go. It could be here. It could be somewhere else, but I can tell you where it's never going to be is in that class again. Um, Grace, a lot of you people I saw dumping your shares the other day, Grace, go ahead. I warned everybody. She was sick. She's not going to be sick forever. A lot of this white count and these weird, uh, these weird anomalies that are in her blood 
come from the colic. I'm sure they do because I was talking to Angelica the other day and a lot of them are attributed to hind gut, uh, hind gut issues. Well, she had one. She almost colic. She, she, you know, she almost had to go to the university. So those levels jumped after the colic and they've stayed up somewhat. Now Angelica believes that we put her on sulfa for 30 days and work on her with a, we bought some, some, uh, sp specific, uh, specific natural stuff that we can put her on. Um, a supplement that she's on right now, I suspect she's going to get better. This idea that she's somehow no good all of a sudden, she is one of the best grassroots fillies in Ontario. I'm certain of it. She's nowhere near as good as she's supposed to be right now, and there's no reason to rhyme for it. And that there is, though. It's right there in black and white in the blood. It's not like we just can't. What is going on with this filly? This is crazy. We know what's wrong with her. We were just having trouble combating it, and we will get those numbers down 100%. So... I warned everybody. I'm not going to harp on it. For those of you dumping your shares of Grace, be warned. I've seen the prices move around this week. You're selling her for less than she's worth. But that's it's your horse. It's your share. You guys do what you want. But it is my company. And I feel I, I, I need to tell everybody, all our clients, everybody can ask and everybody can ask questions and email me. But sometimes it's worth saying, Grace is a better filly than that. And she will bounce back. 31 minutes. Wow. Uh, high Enterprise, a couple of people asked why she's at the Meadows because the 5 8 mile track. I'm going to bring her to the Buckeye first start, which is also on a 5 8 mile track. It just made sense to have her here uh, for tomorrow. I'm not going to race her hard. We get four in tomorrow. want to talk about uh, a painful day at the at work. Four racing, I think three eight holes and a nine hole. Are you kidding me? So Grace, I think best case scenario, not Grace, High Enterprise best case scenario is going to drop over into the five or six hole, shoot her up the wood, try and get her up through somewhere, have her finish up strong on the end of it. That's what I'd like to see from High Enterprise tomorrow. Now, uh, Horn Player, point of contention here. A lot of people asking what happened to her. First off, nothing happened to her. If you watch the last two days, that track is very deep, and she still has those open-toed shoes on. Every time I tried her a different way, she wasn't as good. She's over on the right shaft a little bit. I think she was slipping and touching herself a little bit. But I was careful with her. You know, I told everybody, I'm going to let her rock. I want to go mile and 56. I did. I did want to go mile 56, right up until the point I realized behind the gate, it wasn't going to happen. She fell off the gate a little bit, got comfortable in the four hole. I should have, I felt bad. Hunter come out with sister Solange. I should have towed her up into it, but I just didn't want to get her rolling that early. I wanted to let her settle. She trots the turns for a big horse. She trots the turns fantastic. So I wanted to get her moving in the last turn. Well, Hunter had already come out, stalled in my face. Now I got to move her three wide. If I had been coming with a full head of steam, I win by two lengths. But I, I couldn't, just the way the race worked out. But the one thing I noticed about her is she got home great. You know, that's the first time I ever saw her attack hard the whole way down the lane. She wanted to get there. She was coming to that horse. Regardless, it was 56 or 59. She did her work well. And much like what we just talked about with Brace for Landing, I thought we were on our way to the Doherty Olympics. Now I don't. But there's nothing wrong with that. She's eligible to everything all year. This filly, will, she'll face stiffer company when she's ready to face stiffer company. And I'll talk to Ronnie. I want to talk to him because I owe him a phone call. You know, I told him we had a few horses I thought would be heading to him soon. Spitfire Overseas, who I think we're going to take to Philadelphia. Horn Player, who I think still will end up in the Ron Burke stable. And Carter Michael Dio. I still want to work the kinks out of Carter. Um, Spitfire, I don't know yet. We'll see. And definitely Horn Player, I think, will go there. But is she ready yet? I'll talk to Ronnie. He was very upfront with me. I gave him the option to race her in the kindergarten series tomorrow. Or do you think we should race her in the final? He said, no, I'll just leave her at the Meadows. 100% right. Thank God he said that. She's close. Not quite there yet. As I said to one of my partners on her tape, just have some patience. She's a good filly. You're going to have to have patience. We all are going to have to have patience with them. Now, uh, so, but aside from everything else, horn player, go back and watch the race. Don't look up at the fractions. Watch the race. She did everything right. She just didn't get away well from the gate. We can work on that as we go through over the next few weeks, but it's a long year, and she's a good horse. Just allow her to become one. Eldie's Patrick will come out of the field soon. I think he's actually been out a week longer. He might be a little overcooked. We're going to have to bring him back in very soon and get him jogging again. I can't wait to see. I love this horse. I, I love stories like him. You guys have heard me say this a million times. Probably one of my favorite horses right now. Quietly, one of my favorite horses to drive right now, Austral Hanover. He's turned into a super professional colt. 
and Eldis Patrick just because he's a you know he's the underdog story of the year for the most part. Him and very similar horses. So you can see the horses that I if I fall in love with any horses, it would be those types of horses. Horses that go above and beyond. And then when you factor in the fact that Austro Hanover was so horrible his whole life, and then for him just to all right, it's time to go. Let's go. I like that. Right? It's frustrating to watch that unfold in front of your eyes. But I like that. I like the fact that when the lights come on, he shows up. That's cool. I, I love that about him. Um, so Eldis Patrick will come in soon. Uh, landing pad, landing strip. I, I talked about a, a couple of clients who were asking about landing strip this week. And one client in particular wasn't really happy that he was in Grand River. And as I said to everybody, I know you see, you see his family. You see him and you're like, he's going to be a good horse. You've heard us talk about him. He's going to be a good horse. Here's a horse that was sick twice. Twice this summer. Missed some time just going to take some time. I'm not in a big hurry to get him to the kindergarten, to get him in with these, you know, these killers right now. Until they feel like they want to be a killer, we're really putting them in the deeper end of the pool than they're com they're comfortable with, right? Because unless the horse feels like he just wants to get at it with other horses, and then you put him in with seven that do, it's a tough spot to be in. So just let the horses, please, just have a little patience and let the horses progress the way that they should. Otherwise, we risk really diminishing them overall and hindering their growth as a racehorse. So when you're talking about okay horses, fine, put them in and get them worked. When you're talking about horses that there's something there, it's up to us, it's certainly up to me, and it's certainly up to our training staff, our, our trainers, our drivers, to get there. You know, to get there in the, the quickest fashion, but when you get there, keep them there. And it's not an easy thing to do. So for landing strip, yeah, I don't like that he's got the eight hole. But you know what? He's in with some three-year-olds that are mediocre. It's a good spot for him to be in, I think, his first start. I think it was the right move. So again, Mario was the one to push for that, and I think it was the right move for that colt. As I said, landing pad, another colt that I really like. Both these colts, just, just going to have to give them a little... They might Listen, I might be wrong. They might come out and just be okay horses. But we have to do our due diligence to make sure that if they are just ordinary horses, it wasn't because of us. And that's really where we're at with these horses. Um, now, this is an important one, too. Leaps and bounds. I'm going to forego the Pennsylvania Sire Stakes with her. We're going to Kentucky. Her knees bug her a little bit. She can race in a, a, the distinction, or whatever it's called, the C division. Goes for 15, 15, 15, 15, 50. This is another filly. Could be nice. Let's put her in where she will be nice. She's already shown she can trot. She went in 58. Let's take care of her knees. Let's take care of her feet. Let's put her in where she's going to do some damage. And then we'll see. And if she goes down and she does well in the C, we can always move her to the B. There's nothing saying we can't. But we'll start her in the C, her first start. There is a rule in Kentucky about something, though. I remember this last year. I'm going to have to read up on that. There's, there's a stipulation about moving around. I'm going to have to read up on this. Um, where are we at here? Merchant Man, a number of people asking, about, wouldn't that be great? Imagine if Merchant Man was ready to go and we had eight of those Colts. Oh my God. Uh, we have seven. We have seven, but if Merchant Man can make it to the track and looks like he's state caliber, then he will be coming to Pennsylvania also. I looked, I see the second division, I think uh, the third. The third uh, Stallion Series in Sire Stakes is August. I can't get the exact date. I want to say 14th. I think it's the 14th. That gives us 30 days to have him qualified. I think he's been in 25 a few times. I'm going to ask James to go with him. Uh, what's today? Today, I, my days are just all a blur now. Today is Thursday. I'm going to ask James to train him Saturday. Yes. Train him Saturday at the farm and see what he thinks. Go a couple of trips. Go last trip and 2.15 in the bike. Yes. And then we'll see about, or if they can go to Mohawk for that matter too. And then see where they're at. You know, you go around 212, 215, watch the horse after they train, how they're blowing, how quickly they recover. You get a real firm idea of their baseline. They're ready to do the work they just did or might have to come back again with another slower mile. So I think uh, maybe we'll send them over to Mohawk, go mile 212, 215, and then we'll have a pretty good sense of where Merchant Man is. Nothing but a dreamer, as I just said. James was really, really impressed with the way he schooled on Tuesday. That's great to hear. We're going grassroots. We're going to keep an eye on the second division of the Sire Stakes to see how tough those Colts are getting. And we stay in the grassroots fine. If we come back to the gold fine, this is a very, very nice Colt. I knew he was. I said he was. Um... I told James straight up, I think that his break was caused by his horse, but um, I, I think 
Um, nothing but a dreamer is going to show exactly what we were talking about. I think he's going to take a really good mark and do some real good for us as, a, as a, for, for the rest of his two-year-old season. Um, one, two, skip a few. Another note of importance here. She is going into the condition claimer this week simply because we got a racer where she can do good. You know, the fairs are all running together on the Sire Stake days. It's kind of a uh, kind of a screw up right now, but there are lots of classes for, for one, two, skip a few. She can win the class she was in the other day. We just have to price her. They've made it a 15 claimer. That means her, uh, oh wow, it's dollars $26, $27,000 to claim her. So I think that's more than fair given her current form. I think she's okay. I think she's the exact same as she was last year. Everybody's waiting for her to get better. I think she's the same filly she was last year. There's nothing wrong with that. We just do. We have to do right by her and find the right class for her. Uh, Purple Lauren Sweet on Pete, disastrous the other day. Man, that wasn't a good feeling heading into Pennsylvania, going to going to Ohio, having such a great run, and then just having the ball dropped right on your head. Um, you know, those two fillies making a break was really hard for me. That was a tough page to turn, but I had to do it because we had all those horses in the next day. Um, Sweet on Pete, if you look, is an easy fix. The break was the exact same look as the one in the meadows for Mike Wilder. Same work needs to be done, just maintenance. Not only does it need to be done, but we have to stay ahead of it next time. And I talked to Jason about this and the vet. Uh, I think a sweet on pizza, simple fix. Purple or is no fix need to go over and make sure there's nothing wrong, but track just needs to be better. I think we need to Rashad closer, make sure the corks are tight. And um, if we pull the hobbles in one more hole, we let them out a lot. If we pull them in one more hole, so be it. But Purple Aura's break was unfortunate, but it was what it was, an anomaly on her card for sure. Um, Sir Strong's, I talked about, falls into that category of landing pad, landing strip. He is schooling tomorrow. I'd like to see a mile in 59 or two minutes. I think Austin Sorry's going to go with him. He went with him before. So I'm going to text Johnny when we're done here. Johnny McKinnon knows the Colt very, very well. And I wouldn't even mind if Johnny McKinnon schooled the Colt, but I know he won't. He could take him over with Dominic, and uh, Austin could go with him. He's gone with him twice now. He gets a little hot and gets a little rolling in the turns, but you just got to know him. He's just a little bumpy bugger, but he can trot fast. I would like to see a mile in 59 or two minutes from Sir Strong tomorrow. Um, stay close. Uh, racing, I we have him re-entered now back for Tuesday. The class was carried over. Raced great the other day. Very happy with him. I think he's probably sitting on a, a good line. I did see him the other day. He's a little ribby and getting a little skinny. I think at some point in the next month, We'll probably turn him out for a little bit with the full intention to come back with, with vengeance in the winter. This is going to be a good horse for us. Keep in mind, you might say, well, he's turning six. Well, he's got 25 starts lifetime. So uh, it's important that we remember that. Um, swinging Senorita got the rail, 8-5 to five in a $40,000 stake race. Pretty good feeling. You know, all our fillies, I, I, I wish that uh, the other little filly drew in a little closer. Um, whispering song, but remember what I told you. Whispering Song's going to have a good year this year. Swing Senior is already off to a fantastic year. And, uh, and of course, uh, I'm very happy that we drew the blood and scoped um, Smoking Hot Irish Girl the other day. There was mucus in there. She did tie up a little bit. Now, we can get all that down pretty much for the race day. Um, very important that we found it five days before, though. So, great job by Jason and the vet for sure there. Uh, where are we at now? Tie one on. Big news here. I didn't realize this was the last leg today. It's July, and the Sire Stick season's over? Are you kidding me? Now, the final's not for six weeks, five or six weeks, but the points are all done. She was in, right? She's she's made the final, even with the break today. That was tough. Eh? Scotty said she just throwing her head and being rude, and he couldn't figure out why. I said, well, just borrow Crantini's brain cord and put it on her, and that will be that. So I think that's probably what he's going to do. Uh, he was a little miffed about it. He thought, you know, especially after they went in 55, you know, he thought she was a winner. But... It is what it is. She's one of those fillies, probably like a six to one shot in the final. She draws good and gets the right trip. She can beat them. She is a good enough filly. So there's still stakes, quite a few stakes left for uh, Ty went on. Also, we one of our clients I was talking to earlier about making this video. And I was talking about Bomb Hugger and the way he went. They said, well, she's along the same lines, a little bit. Bomb Hugger's got a little more meat on the bone, especially now. Ty went on's a bigger, stronger filly. But if we're selling the fillies online, there's just pedigree, races, and lines. And uh, although Baumhugger's a little bit smaller, she has a lot more to offer on paper than Ty Went On does. So I think when you're talking about selling them, make sure if you're selling them, this is when you're going to get top dollar. Baumhugger, 100% yes. 
Taiwan on, I'm not certain about yet, but we'll see how that game plays out. Um, Taiwan on, very, very nice filly, and I think she'll bounce back just fine for Scotty, and he knows that too. Twinbee Habanero, a lot of people asking me about this Colt. And remember, when he jumped on his foot and had to have it stitched for the second time, uh, I went a mile in two minutes, come twenty, come 28 seconds with him. Probably was going to come 27 if he didn't jump on himself. Last half and 56 in a bit. It won't be long getting him back. I would suspect we could probably even school him uh, school him Tuesday, or at the very least, take him to Mohawk on Saturday. So there won't be a problem there. He's close, put it that way. Um, unbeatable Kemp, some people are a little confused, said, are you racing him in Pennsylvania? He's turned out in Pennsylvania. I'm giving him a month off, put some weight on him, bring him back. We're going to aim this guy towards the fall and winter um, for a very good reason. I think the staking season, I don't want to race him without Lazex in the Red Mile at all. Um, New Jersey, he's got a few things. Somebody said, what about that race at Freehold? Yeah, he can get around a half, but for the money they go for, yeah, they go for one shot for 70, but it's not like they're going to give you the money. It's not like, oh my God, unbeatable camps here. Everybody just take your harness off and go home. No, it's they're going to race. It's going to be tough. And... Um, if he's ready for it, it looks good, fine, but it's not something that's really on my calendar. I'm looking at later in the fall, into the winter, into the winter, doing some damage with this guy. I think this Colt has a lot to offer us as a four-year-old, a lot. Um, were we Yuri? Another, a lot of people asking too. Well, you said he was going to qualify, then he isn't. I, I just, I, I made it abundantly clear to Mario, there is zero pressure with Were We Yuri. Just get him there when you know he's ready to win. That's it. When he's ready to be a good horse. I have no interest in just saying, oh, thank God we got Yuri qualified. Zero interest. Have him ready. When he's ready to trot 58, that's when you take him to the track. So whenever that is, it's close. Whenever that is, that's when he'll be there. Um, what a mission. I didn't really need to talk about what a mission. I'm very imp impressed and pleased with this horse. Much along the same lines as Austral Hanover. Not quite. But along the same lines as Austral Hanover, you know, made a lot of breaks, was very ignorant, rude all year long. But now when push comes to shove, he wants to trot. He wants to do his work. Very impressed with what I've seen from this colt. Very, very happy and happy to stay and drive him on Monday. Just He's, he's turned into a nice horse to drive also. Uh, White Tiger, nice to see him back. Uh, I'll tell everybody, James said, I don't know. He said, will he get through that last turn at top speed? I said, hmm, if only somebody told you to go on 54 or 55, so you would know if he could get through that last turn. I guess I should have told you that. Wait, no, I, th I think I did, but it didn't happen, so. He said, what do you want me to do, a quarter pole on alarm detector? I said, James, qualifier. It's gonna take him. He said, I wonder if he walks. Okay, then we say, all right. I was more worried about, can he go a full mile, switching gears in the first and last turn at Mohawk with no hobbles on? That was number one. The idea that he would walk is unlikely. And if alarm detector had a bounced out from around him and beat him, oh well, or not alarm detector, run director. If run director had a bounced out and beat you, oh well, I get beat by run director. It's not the end of the world. Anyway, James, partially, I see his argument. He finished up with a bow in his neck in behind them. Great, but you didn't test him. So we don't know, I don't know what's going to happen in a racing situation with White Tiger on Monday. I don't know. We're all going to see together. So we'll see what happens with White Tiger on Monday. He might go out winning 53. He might make a break. I don't know what he'll do. Even if he runs, all we got to do is just simply put the hobbles back on. It's not a hard thing to do. And the start of White Tiger, uh, the start of him coming back now, he's had a pretty good layoff. We took our time getting him back. Him and Locatelli are ready to go now, and they'll be ready to go right through the winter. So very, very happy with what I saw the other day from White Tiger. I wish I had. I wish he had stretched him a little bit, but... That's fine. It's, it's James. I'll give him the leeway. We'll see how the horse races on uh, on Monday. Um, Will the win Hanover? Another big, big, big update here. After the race day, I took Will the win Hanover back. Um, and certainly nothing to do with, with uh, Julie Miller. We sent her there expecting she would become some form of a stake filly. Not a filly. And this is not their fault. Just because we hoped it would happen didn't mean that it was going to or should have. But... Um, but uh, 20 to 1 off the rail in a Stallion Series event, pretty hard to just send the horse back to the Poconos in Philadelphia when we can race her here and bring her back to Ontario. The plan for Willow and Hamper was very simple. Get a good mark on her, make some money. The bulk of what she's worth is as a broodmare, not now. She's not going to be a world champion. She's not going to be three-point blue chip, whatever he becomes now, but what he could have become. If, he's, if she's not going to be that, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. 
she's worth a fortune as a broodmare. It's not the end of the world. So um, I, I said to Tim, I, I messaged Julie. I said, listen, I think Tyler drove the horse fantastic. The kid's got a good set of hands. He drove her great. He did everything right. She just let us down. I said, so she's not a steak filly. I think we'll just keep her here. So Tim Twaddle tech took uh, Will to win Hanover. I'll probably race her here, drive her here next week, maybe once or twice, and then we'll send her back to Mohawk. Maybe freshen her up for a little bit, but make no mistake, just so everybody's clear, first part of February, she's being bred, and we are not going to miss any time with her. It will be as soon as it makes sense to breed her, that's when she will be bred. Uh, World for two. Another horse, a lot of people asking, where is he? He's in tomorrow, obviously. Drew the outside. I'm not going to hurt him. I'm going to drop in probably 6th, 7th, and race him accordingly. He's already won a stallion series, so well on his way to making the final. Thankfully, there was this massive gap in the stallion series for him. I think he's paid into the yard, too. I'll have to check. But um, World for Two, you know, uh, this time off's helped him, right? One, it let him freshen himself up, but two, it let us fix that foot up which has probably been bothering him for a while. So uh, I'll, I'll update you how he does tomorrow. I expect to do very, very well. But very lucky and very happy to have World for Two back. I guess I should backtrack a little bit. These are obviously alphabetical and talk about Three Point Blue Chip. I didn't really have an update. He should be coming out of the pool this week. I know Julie was super happy with the x-rays and the progression of him. So everything is going as planned right now. I think this will happen quickly where he'll get back to the track probably jog for a week or two and then start training and then there'll be hurdles as we push him a little bit as Julie and Andy push him a little bit there'll be uh, you know a, a barrage of x-rays come up again for this horse and they'll move forward in that manner so everything is going according to plan with with three point blue chip as is and then last but not least is yes everybody said well, what happened his last start where is he at he didn't have a good run in Kentucky the horse come back he looked tired he was a little bit sore on his front feet um, Jason's been working on it he said listen He's just not super sharp this week. I said, don't race him unless he's perfect. We're not wasting starts with yes. So yes, he'll be trained up and will race. Uh, and will race next week. So with that, that's a pretty in-depth look. Uh, what I have to do over the next two days is map out where everybody's going. Where's Crantini going to go? Where's Carter Michael Dio going to go? Now a couple of those like Carter Michael Dio could change. Very fluid list right there. Horn player. I'd like to talk to Ronnie, but I suspect... Keep her here for a little bit. If he wants to bring her down and race her in a couple of two-year races, or race her in kindergarten next time down in New Jersey, fine. That's a discussion I'm going to have with Ronnie. But as of right now, I guess, sure, telling you how I was going to cut her loose and go a mile 56 and then get beaten 59, not cool. But at the same token, when you look at the race, she did the best she could. She did everything she could do. So for the people out there that saying, is she good enough? I want to say yes. Is she a Grand Circuit Philly? I want to say yes. She hasn't shown me yet, though, right? I, 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 she also, it's very important that we talk about this part. She hasn't shown me she's not. She hasn't done anything in any of the starts I've raced her or the qualifier. I'm like, maybe she's just not good enough. No, she's a big, giant filly that raced as good as she could today. And you know what? Just watch the last 100 yards of today's race, and you're going to see the direction this filly's going in, which is the right one. So with that, I hope that answers a lot of questions. Jeez, we've been talking for 53 minutes, but I had a nap. I didn't want to make a video before I had a nap. I was tired, man, really tired. But it's just the heat and everything going on, and then you jammed all those babies into one day, coming off such a horrible day in Scioto, and then knowing I had to get up the next day at 6, take Father Dunn to Northfield, school brace for landing in Enzo Aguello. Super happy with everything I've seen so far this summer. Sure. You guys know we're going to have some horses that are going to leave. You guys know we're going to have some horses. Like, Real Fear. Everybody's asked, how did he not get on this list? Everybody asking me, what's going on with Real Fear? Race terrible. He raced horrible. We gelded him today. He's castrated now. Do I think that was it? No, but I'm running out of excuses for this horse. He should be pacing him 55, 56. Instead, he looked terrible. So... We're going to castrate him. He's going to get a week. We're going to draw his blood. We're going to make sure he is 100%. And he's running out of chances. So as the Ohio sale approaches, and as preferred, continues to send out emails saying, our next sale is coming up blank. There's going to be some horses in our group that you know are going to be in those sales. Real Fear has a real chance of being one of them. But... You know, I, I don't have the list in front of me, but um, yes, I do, actually. I can pull it up now. 
I can tell you right now, real, real quick, when we look at the horses we have and how lucky we are to have them, <clears throat> let me just run through. I'll give you a little list of horses that are good right now. The best they can be are, are getting there. Horses that I know are impressive horses. All right, we'll start right now. I'm not going to talk about Absolute Euphoria, who I think is going to be a nice three-year-old, or Anchors Up, who I think is going to be a nice three-year-old. We'll talk about them. Austral Hanover. Amazing horse. Amazing horse right now, especially especially considering where he came from. Austral Hanover. Brace for landing. Carter Michael Deal. I'm going to try and keep a tally in my head. That's three. That's three. Coupe de Ville, four. Crantini, five. Cunning Connie was good. She's just grassroots Philly. I won't even put her on my list. I won't even put her there. Five. Um, Cutting Connie. Cutie Cumber, you're going to see her come forward. I'm putting her on the list as six. Uh, Enzo, you'll see next week. Seven. Uh, Fashion Presidente, eight. Five Fish Species isn't there yet. I think she's going to be a nice Philly. This is Bomb Hugger's full sister. Won't even put her on the list yet. Still at eight. Uh, Gandalf the Black, got to put him on there. Or second and 55. Another just like Austral. Not quite as good, but the same, same, same ilk. Nine. Uh, GJ's ATM. Exactly what we need him to be so far. Ten. High Enterprise. She will be. Eleven. Horn Player. Twelve. Lady All-Star. I won't put her on there because you haven't seen her yet. Very, very happy with Lady All-Star. Still at twelve. Um, landing Pad. Landing Ship. It's okay. I won't put them on there just yet. We'll stay at 12. These are horses I'm telling you are good right now. You can see there's a ton that are still not on this list that will be. Um, Leaps and Bounds, already won in 58. 13. I won't put Tom on. Merchant Man, Mo Power Baby. Won't put them on, but I am putting more than you know on. 14. Uh, nothing But a Dreamer, 15. Rosita's Dream, 16. Car gave up. Um, Sister Solange, 17. Smoking Out Irish Girl, 18. Spitfire, 19. Swinging Senorita, 20. Tailgate Buzz, 21. Una Madonna's gone now, but still, she was our horse, 22. Victor Cruz, 23. What a Mission, 24. Whispering Song, 25. I just gave you 25 horses that are very, very good two-year-olds in their own right, in their own jurisdiction, in their own, in their own way. Very good horses. And I gave you about another eight or nine that I believe are on their way to being good horses. That's what kind of a good year we're about to have. And are having, for that matter. So I'm super pleased. Obviously, uh, much more refreshed than I was this afternoon at 5 o'clock. Uh, but I feel great now. It's great to get away with the family. I mean, it's the kids are swimming every day and having fun every day. Um, we don't even race till tomorrow at five o'clock. So we get the whole morning and afternoon, take Ollie to the batting cages. Um, and then Saturday, nothing to do Saturday, nothing. I told Harry, I could have went home and drove. Um, I could have went home and drove our boy Sintra in his first start, but they got him in tough. And I think that guy we got driving the Philly on guy's pretty good too. So Sintra will be just fine. Uh, a little warning if the race office is watching, he pulled that stunt again. Or he fits an armor as a 7 and you put him in an armor as a 12, there'll be no more Centris in Canada. Of that, I can assure you. I know it's tough. I see the, the messages today, 9.30 in the morning. Mohawk is short in every class. I get it. But I'm not going to have horses that we train fed to other stables. It's just not going to happen. So, um, you know, I, I talked about sending Centra to even Illinois. I might do that. May do that next week. I don't know. Uh, but very happy to have Cinter in the barn. Obviously, everybody knows about that. We bid on a couple other horses you don't even know about uh, that we didn't get. We're going to continue as we get closer to the yearling sales and everybody's super excited about them, especially with the year we're having. We're going to continue to make sure that we fortify the the fortify the back wall, so to speak, of, of uh, I guess it would be the front wall, of the stable.ca with some real good overnights. Red Overbach. Uh, trained better this week. James was happy. Dominic was happy. He's going in the non as a three. We entered him at Georgia, and he didn't get in. The class didn't go. Uh, we'll enter him Tuesday at Mohawk. But again, we got some nice horses in the barn. Even the ones that we brought in, like surprises when, when a horse like Blue Tesla goes out and races the way she does. Just makes me feel good because it means that I did my job good. So, um, another good day at the at the track for the stable.ca so far. I'm going to watch our boy more than you know go tonight. Good luck to... I guess my partner, <laughs> Wayne Schaefer, was recovering uh, from a little bout, a little bout of sickness. So 
Uh, Wayne, hope you're feeling better. Jacob, keep up the good work. Get our horses in full. <laughs> we'll talk to you all very soon. Take care, everybody.